Hello and welcome back to day two of harvest. The first official of the official days. We sampled a little bit about a week ago before we really started, but I uh, got to go into my field view cab uh, app here. It's connected to my phone. Uh, this uses the hotspot on my phone. You can see that it's updating all the fields when we start in the morning and it will do an update at night when we shut down but right now we're going to go to our map I said we was may have to back out it's a little finicky sometimes but most of the time it does alright now there's our map we're right here on uh, The Sims Hill, or you can see where uh, you can see where we opened the field up last night. Uh, pretty good corn right through there. This section right here may prove pretty iffy on the yield. <clears throat> we gotta go in here and put our calibration load in. Uh, Mantra shows we shelled 4,882 bushels and the actual bushels was 4,727. We're going to apply that. It was 3% off. Tells us it was a success. Reset our area. I normally use that as what we've, uh, to see what we shell in a day, in a day's time. So. We got that. We should be ready to start for the day. You can see what it shows that corn's making, which is a little lower than that. You can take 3% off that. And that's, maybe we can have another big day. We shelled about, uh, we shelled 40 acres yesterday, ran, uh, ran a half a day. Whoa! <laughs> Guess I need to take it out of road gear. You see this green corn right here? It's actually some corn I came and spotted in. We swapped to a... In the past, we've used a chemical called RIM-Q had really good luck with it this year we swapped to a product called armazon pro and i'm just not real impressed with the results it our corn is normally cleaner than this but i mean it could just it could just be the year you know then right after we sprayed it we didn't have a whole lot of moisture uh so might not got activated good takes moisture to activate some of the residual aspects of it and uh, it didn't have enough moisture to make it make a big old stalk to, to uh, shade the ground making about 75 through here 86 84 On a good year, everybody brags about 
how good their corn was and on a bad year everybody talks about how bad it was what their worst corn was it kind of flip-flops that corn there didn't put much of air on it i don't know if you can hear it but i can tell how good the corn is doing by the the way it rumbles the threshing cylinder is right up underneath the cab on these John Deere Walker combines and you can hear them cobs bouncing around up underneath you. You got to get up above a hundred bushel to hear much rumbling unless you just got your hydrostat handle pegged out. And I could run a little faster right now but with that grass in it I'm kind of giving this time letting it chew that grass up a little bit. Right now, my corn's running a little better than expected. I was, uh, I was, by the kernel counts and stuff we've done, uh, I was expecting about 80, about 80 bushel to the acre. But this, uh, one thing that is really surprising it, it is and it's not is this corn has had a really good test weight like uh, 60.9 percent or 60.9 test weight on 16 percent corn and if you know as it dries down to 15 the test weight will get even better on it so that's really surprising I think what's happened is when it finally started raining the first of August it it did put some weight in the kernels. If it didn't put that weight, if we didn't get them rains in August and put that weight in that kernel, it wasn't never done this good. We'd be looking at 60, 70 bushel corn. But them, uh, that, even though the rain was late, it did add yield, or saved what yield potential we had. At least on that corn. I don't know how it's going to be when we get over to the lake. The, over at the lake, the kernel counter count uh, figures out much better than this. Over at the lake, we're, it was figuring up like 150 bushel corn. I'll be surprised if it makes that. Planter man got a little wide. But if you slow down and take your time, they'll pull over there and get in. When I slow down like this, I really need to slow my header down a little bit because I'm getting some uh, getting some shelling out there on the header. That's the only thing I don't like about uh, shelling dry corn. I know you, I know you don't get a dock at the elevator, but you lose uh, you probably lose a bushel out there on the header shelling off. Boy, that other day when we were shelling and it was 20%, boy, I wanted to keep rolling so bad. That corn was just shelling so good. Another thing I noticed is the stalks have stayed real green and the grain is dry. That's a, that's a good sign. Uh, maybe if we get a storm or something, it'll stand, which... We got pretty weather all the way till uh, we got pretty weather all the way to Sunday, and ain't but a 40% chance of rain Sunday. I'd like to get one more rain on my double crop beans and try to finish them out. But getting back pretty dry again. Well, it kind of recharged our soil moisture, but it's starting to run out again. I'd like to make sure we had enough rain to. Uh, well, I can make sure we got enough rain to get this weed up. We plan on having at least 180 acres of weed again. I got enough to plant. 520. If we sow three bushel. Got enough for 173 acres at three bushel to the acre if I drill that much. 
<coughs> Normally I don't drill but two and a half bushel to the acre, 150 pounds. But the sabans, this is saved the weight, not certified. I'm probably gonna, probably gonna do three. We get this six rows knocked off. That'll have the, that'll have the field opened up. This corn over here to the side was planted about three weeks later. Uh, this farm has got a hill and then it falls off in a flat. And uh, the hill was acceptable to plant, but the flat was really, really wet when we planted the hill. So we waited till the conditions got right. We may make a shimmy we may make a shimmy down through that. If it's under 18, we'll probably go on and shell it. Just, just for the fact that we can get this ground ready to uh, put weight on. Stupidest of crap that holds up production here on Joyce Farms. We got started at 10 o'clock this morning. I mean, we, we, we whipped out like 15 acres like that this morning. And go take the load off go grab a chicken strip at the gas station come back to get out of my truck and i can't get out of my truck the darn linkage is wore slap dab out and the dumb butts at freightliner they put boats right here but they thought it would be a good idea to rivet the dam door panel on i just ah. I like Dion. I, I, I got frustrated with the trucking business. Oh, now when I was screwing around, I screwed my winder up. Got to figure out how this goes back in there. This little wheel goes in there like so. Maybe, I don't know. I thought maybe this corn down here in this flat would be a little better, but the water hurt it early. You can't have it all. That's a recipe for disaster. Too wet early and and uh, dry light. Nobody can argue the stalk quality and stalk health of the cropland corn. You got a few ears like this one right here, you know, pretty decent air. It had enough weight to flop over. And then you got this right here. Crap like that's what's causing the alpha toxin. Knock on wood, thankfully. 
I ain't had too much trouble with that yet. Hope we keep it that way. There's old 4640 majestically on the hill. It is a hot son of a gun out here. We have, uh, we was in, uh, last week was, uh, false, false fall, and now we're into second summer. Indian summer, whatever the crap you want to call it. But it is a hot son of a gun. Maybe it'll cool off. I mean, like, mid-90s hot. Rough, boy. 